INAT 5s, I'm going to take you through cell structure, so that's basically the whole of the first key area in cell biology. Right, so start off with what the cell is. This is not a definition that's changed since first year, I think it was the first time you came across it. It is the basic unit of life. So what we're saying is that if you take parts out of that, it can't survive and it's the absolute minimum thing you need to have for it to survive. And basic unit of life, so really going back, what we're really saying is that it is something which can move, respire, feed, reproduce, excrete, grow and sense. So a cell can do all of that, which is our definition of life, basically. So the parts that are inside the cell, we now know which bits do particular jobs. But what we know is that each one can't survive on its own. So if I can find something like the nucleus, I can say that controls the cell. But if I try and put the nucleus on its own, not in a cell, it wouldn't survive. So you have to be able to look at a cell and label each of these parts inside it. And because we're looking not just at the structure, but the detail of the structure, that's why we call that the ultra structure. So inside a human body, you know that we have organs. Each organ has a specific job. So what we mean by an organelle is just something which has a specific job. But I don't know why they actually gave it the L bit, this bit here. I think just because it sounds cuter and smaller than organ. So an organelle is a small version of an organ. It's a particular area of a cell that does a particular job. Let's start with the animal cell. OK, so in junior school, you would have drawn an animal cell. Hopefully it's just like a blob. There is no fixed shape really to animal cells because they don't have what plant cells have, which we're going to come to in a minute. So round the outside of an animal cell, you have got a cell membrane. So this line here. And although at the moment it just looks like a line, given that it controls what enters and exits the cell, it's going to have to be a lot more complicated than just a line. So we'll look at that in more detail in the next key area. And what is essential is that that also holds in the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is the kind of gunky soup of the cell. It has all of the enzymes that are going to let reactions take place. It's got all the chemicals that you need. It's obviously rather important. So that's the kind of liquidy stuff that kind of fills the cell up. You also have the nucleus. Now, the nucleus, before we just said controls the cell, and that's fine, but you're going to have to know that in a bit more detail as we go on. At the moment, you just need to know it controls the cell. But what you have there is another membrane, so this bit here, and that membrane is made of the same stuff that makes up the cell membrane, but it's doing a slightly different job. It's holding all the DNA together and it's also letting out the instructions. And that is this thing down here, mRNA. And we're going to talk about that again later on. I think that's key area four. But I could check that. Um, also inside the cell, we have things called the mitochondria. Um, I think they look kind of like a funny mouth with weird teeth. OK, so this is where your animal cells, in fact, a lot of cells, do aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration means where there's oxygen and respiration is releasing energy from your food. This is a super important thing. There is a whole key area on respiration. So we'll look at that again. And finally, what we have are a whole pile of little dots called ribosomes. Um, so each of these things here. And some of them are just floating around. These ones are all floating around inside. Some of them are also stuck to some membrane inside the cell, um, which is called this. But you don't have to worry about that. So don't worry about that name. All you need to know are these guys, ribosomes. And what they do is they make protein. So what we have is the instructions for the protein inside here. And then we have holes to take the instructions out. And then we have a place to actually make them. And once you've made them, then the proteins can go on and do a job. And if they're doing a job, they're going to move into the cytoplasm to do that because that's where all the cell reactions take place. So all this connects up. All of this is essential jobs that are being done by bits of the cell. This is your animal cell. So cell membrane, cytoplasm, mitochondria, 
ribosomes and the nucleus. You need to know what each of these bits do and you need to be able to find them on a picture. There are lots more, just to warn you, but these are the main ones and they are the ones you need to know. So you might see a, a cell picture that looks more complicated, but these are the ones you're looking for. A plant cell looks quite like an animal cell in some ways. It has all the things that I've just gone through in the in the animal cell. So here's your cell membrane around the outside. You've got a nucleus with its membrane to allow instructions out. You've got the cytoplasm, you have the mitochondria, and you have the ribosomes. So we have all of those things that are there in an animal cell. But a plant cell also has a few more. So you also have, and this is probably the most important one in terms of structural difference, you have the cell wall. And that gives it shape and support. So it decides what shape the cell is going to be and it keeps it that, that way. You also have inside plant cells vacuoles. And the vacuoles are filled with cell sap and they help control water regulation. We're going to talk about these quite a bit as well when we come to osmosis in the next key area. And also, really, really important, which you don't have in animal cells and we absolutely depend on so that we can survive, we have chloroplasts. And these are the site of photosynthesis. Now, they look a little bit more complicated than the kind of green blob that you might have done before. Uh, and you're going to need to know a little bit more about what those bits inside are. So our bacterial cell is a simple type of cell. Uh, this time we don't have a nucleus. Inside, instead we have one circular chromosome, which is just kind of floating around inside the cytoplasm. Uh, we do have ribosomes because we need to be able to make proteins so you can do stuff. And because bacteria need to move, they have these kind of tails that come out the back, which are called flagellum. Um, this is a really, really important extra bit. Plasmids, right? So what a plasmid is, is an extra bit of DNA. So your chromosome is your main section of DNA and is absolutely essential. But plasmids add extra things. So if you want to think of it in terms of something that might make sense to you, uh, the chromosome is like your operating system on your phone. So the plasmids are like apps. Your chromosome, you don't mess with that because if you mess with that, you will probably break your phone and it will stop working. However, you can change the apps and you can edit them. And that is how we get genetically engineered bacteria. So this little piece of DNA, this little extra bit in here, the plasmid, is really important. Okay, inside, there's a cytoplasm because you need to be able to do cell reactions. And we have a membrane around the outside and we have a cell wall. And just so you don't worry, sometimes they show three layers um, and normal, normally it's two. It should be these, these guys, the cell membrane and the cell wall. But sometimes they show a third layer. This is called the capsule and it's just like a, a well, sometimes also called the slime layer. So pretty gross. But if that comes up, don't worry about that one. What you're looking for is, can you find a single circular chromosome? Can you find little dots to make a ribosome? Flagellum kicking around about the place. Plasmid are your extra little bits of DNA. Cytoplasm, where the cell reactions take place. Cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell. And the cell wall gives it shape and support. Your last type of cell is a fungal cell. So this is a kind of, it's an odd mixture of several types of cell almost because we have a nucleus, we have some extra kind of things floating around, which are food and stuff like that. It has a cell wall. So, so far it's looking like a plant cell. It has a cytoplasm cell membrane and a vacuole. So you're like, yeah, that looks very like a plant cell, but it doesn't have any chloroplasts, so it can't do photosynthesis. And what is really important, and I'm going to have to add them in here, They have plasmids, which is kind of like a bacterial cell. So they're kind of a weird crossover between the other types. So here's your comparison. Every single cell has a cytoplasm because you need to be able to do chemical reactions. Every cell has a cell membrane because you need to be able to control what goes in and out of the cell. In terms of a nucleus, three of them have it, one of them doesn't. Okay, in terms of plasmids, uh, we have two that do, bacteria and fungi. 
So all of them have DNA, all of them have chromosomes, but they have them in different places. Cell walls, no for the animal, but the other three are yeses. Mitochondria, we have it in animal and plant, not in bacteria, but yes in the fungi. Ribosomes, everybody's got them because everyone needs to make proteins. Vacuole, not in the animal, yes in the plant, not in the bacteria, and yes in the fungi. And lastly, chloroplasts, no for the animal, yes for the plant, and no for everybody else. The cell wall, there is not much you need to know about this, but you do need to know a couple of very specific things about it. Uh, we're going to look at it, how it helps to protect cells in the next key area, but the compound that the cell is made up of, you need to know one specific name. Any plant cell, you need to know its cellulose. The bacteria and fungi, you need to know it's not cellulose. You're not going to have to know the names of them. Some of them are quite complicated, like peptidoglycan and weird things like that. But just go with it's not cellulose in bacteria and fungi. It is cellulose in plants. OK, so if you want to look at a cell, the problem is that they're rather small. So you need a microscope. And when we're talking about them, we're going to use this term. We're going to use micrometers quite a lot which means you need to be able to convert micrometers from other ones and also to other cell sizes using micrometers. So there are 1000 millimetres in a metre. OK, I think everyone knows what a millimetre thing looks like. If you think of a just a normal ruler, think about a centimetre and then think of those little tiny, the smaller marks inside there, the tenths. OK, that is a millimetre. I struggle now with the next bit. One of those little bits, divide it by a thousand in your head and you've got to micrometer. Now that's just tiny, mind-blowingly tiny. OK, so if you've been given it in millimetres and you want to go to micrometers, then what you're going to have to do is times it by a thousand. If you've been given it in micrometers and you want to go to millimetres, you're going to have to divide it by a thousand. OK, so that's just a straight. You need to know where you're going with that. A microscope is how we actually get the. The visual for this, um, and so you should know from way back. To get magnification, you just multiply the two types of lenses that you have, the eyepiece and the objective. This is revision. Just so you're clear, your eyepiece is up the top. Um, you have normally got two focuses, the rough focus. Um, this is your light. And this is your second lens, the objective lens. Um, your slide gets put on the stage. And there's your slide. And then your fine focus is used to, to bring it up into sharp focus once you've got the basic focus done. So again, revision. You start with the smallest objective lens. We normally have a 4, a 10 and a 40. So if you so you start with a 4 and at the top you have on the eyepiece a 10. So that's 10 times 4. So that's 40 times bigger even at the smallest magnification. You put your stage down to the lowest point, rough focus on that one, um, and then you put your slide on and you can decide whether you want to clip it in or not. Then very slowly pull up the focus until it goes sharp. And that's your that's you in focus. And now that you've got it in focus on the smallest objective, you can move up a power. So you would go from your four to your hundred. OK. Again, just a reminder, if you're setting up a microscope slide, you take a glass slide and then you add either a drop of water or staining solution onto your slide. And the whole point of a stain is literally just so you can see things more clearly. And there's a couple of really good ones. Iodine solution is an excellent stain for seeing cell walls and the nucleus even. Uh, methylene blue is a very good one for showing up uh, cell membrane. So we can nucleus so we can see, use that in animal cells. So you take your sample tissue and then trying very carefully, you try and get a single layer of it on top of your stain. That's tricky. And then 
the even trickier bit, you need to put a cover slip on top of your sample, trying not to trap any air bubbles. If you find a perfectly circular cell, it's probably not a cell, it's an air bubble. And that's us folks, the whole of Key Area 1.